about to get started here. Um, give a couple minutes to let people log in here. Um, but I uh, just want you guys to know I don't believe in starting a, uh, a time management class late. So, um, but I want to give people a couple minutes to understand that uh, logging in and, and making sure the connections are together is important. So, give everybody a little bit of time here. And uh, once you come on, uh, please go ahead and say hello. Um, and uh, we'll get started here shortly. All right. <clears throat> It is 101. I want to thank those who uh, are going to watch this stream. Um, I know this is a weird time that we're living in right now. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of contribute, give you guys some nuggets that I've been um, uh, discovering as I've had more time to reflect, obviously, uh, not getting as many uh, in-person appointments. Uh, but there are definitely some other ways that you can be interactive and with your clients. Uh, and still be productive, uh, even if you're not at uh, your physical office location or physically meeting clients and things like that. So um, I'm really excited about teaching this class today. This class is really about time management, scheduling, avoiding distractions, uh, note taking and uh, memory. Like we have uh, all these logins and things with um, um with everything everything has a login mar has a login um uh you log into facebook you log into all the social media platforms everything 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 has a login and trying to remember those passwords uh can be difficult uh and if you are using the same password across all those platforms uh that could be dangerous uh you can put yourself at more risk so we're going to talk about some tools today uh that can help with all of these things um, I, this is a series. This is the first of a um, five class series that I'm doing uh, every Friday, 1 p.m. Uh, I'll be hosting uh, this little um, webinar uh, all about tech tools. Um, and if I teach a tech tool class, I typically try to find uh, tools that are absolutely one useful. Uh, number two, I want to make sure that they uh, are as, as affordable as possible and free is my favorite word, my favorite four letter word. So a lot of the, the apps and the, um, uh, and the applications that we're gonna use and talk about are going to be free uh, and or little to no cost, uh, or they just have a free version and you can upgrade. Um, but anyway, so um, we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. If you have, by the way, any questions um, comments or concerns or anything you want to say. Uh, yes, this is uh, powered by StreamYard, um, but uh, I am streaming live to uh, YouTube. And so if you are watching on YouTube, you can absolutely uh, post a comment. I can have your comment uh, on the screen, just as you see uh, my uh, uh, post asking you to just say hello uh, and any questions that you may have. So um, I can pull your questions up right here on the screen and everybody will know uh, what we're talking about uh, and I can go ahead and get those answers. So feel free to reply uh, or ask any questions, say hello, anything like that in the comment section. So um, uh, if you have a question, that means somebody else probably has that same question. Uh, and I want to make sure that uh, you guys get as much out of this as possible. OK, um, so with that, let's kind of go into uh, what we're going to do today. The course timetable here, let me get this off the screen. So our course timetable here, you'll see that um, we're gonna do the introduction. It's kind of what we're getting into now. Um, about 10 minutes of time management and just uh, time management and focus tools. Why are those things important? Um, also, we're gonna talk about uh, some things that I like, tools that I like as far as uh, calendar scheduling, blocking, booking, whatever you want to call it, uh, getting those appointments somewhere where you can access them all the time, easy for you and your clients to access as well. Um, so I'm going to talk about Google Calendar and Square. Uh, both of those are really, really got some, some really strong 
uh, tools to help you become more productive uh, and um, help you in, in scheduling and booking uh, appointments. Also, I'm going to talk about a couple apps you probably never heard of. Uh, both of these are time management productivity apps uh, to make sure that you know where you're spending your time uh, while you're on the internet. <laughs> this is, there are going to be some really cool things that I show you guys with those, uh, but that'll be something we do later. Uh, it's only 10 minutes. Uh, and then in uh, Evernote and OneNote, this is a note taking app that you can do online. Um, keep all your notes in one place. I know uh, I am a, a massive note taker and I've been doing it on uh, with pen and paper for so long. Um, I've got stacks and stacks of notes that are unorganized and, and, and um, all over the place. So this is going to be something that helps those who go to a lot of classes, take a lot of notes uh, in meetings or what have you and can keep everything uh, in order so they can be more organized and thus more productive, right? Um, so also, and then the last topic that we're going to talk about uh, is 1Password for all. Um, hey, Camille, how you doing? 1Password uh, for all. This is for those uh, people like me. I'm, I'm not, I don't have the greatest <laughs> memory of all. Uh, however, um, uh, this is an app that you can use one master password, one master password, and it uh, can open up pretty much all of your um, uh, passwords and thus make them stronger. You don't have to remember them so they can create different passwords that are much, much stronger than you would uh, create for yourself. Um, and uh, that's something that we're gonna talk about as well. And then we'll finish up with the Q and A and the big value. So uh, I know these are, you can tell that they're really, really short time periods on these. So it's not gonna be very, very in depth. Uh, this kind of be a, a more of a introduction to a lot of these tools. Um, and because of that, if there are any classes that you guys want uh, uh, me to focus on uh, in another class or another uh, episode, uh, another webinar or something like that, and you want me to go deeper into one of these, please, please uh, comment. Uh, also, if you want to stay in touch with me uh, as far as classes are concerned uh, for the rest of this series, uh, all you have to do is really subscribe. If you're, if you're watching this YouTube video, just subscribe to me right now. Uh, and then you can get all those, the alerts and everything when I'm uh, posting new content and new material. All right, great. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and get this party started. So um, moving right along, quick introduction. Uh, yes, and for those of you that don't know me, my name is Rodney Tate Jr., AKA Real Estate Tate. Uh, I am uh, a U.S. Navy veteran. I serve uh, overseas in Japan for about close to four years. Um, and um, been training since high school in ROTC. I was training while I was a Navy sailor. Um, I've been training and I've had 10 year sales background as well. So I've been training people in sales um, and, and, all, and, and basically teaching, training and things are just something that's in my blood. So um, if you need my credentials, I also have almost 200 hours in, uh, in CE credit. Um, which is continuing education uh, in real estate. I've only been in the business uh, coming up on four years now, uh, so that's a lot of uh, a lot of studying, a lot of information. But I'm, I, I'm I try to be like a sponge because we are always learning, um, and so that's me. Uh, as it says here, I'm here because I do love to educate, and technology is just another passion of mine. So I don't mind doing these classes here uh, for free to try to help everybody in their businesses. All right. So if you have any questions, you can always find me at uh, Real Estate Tate. That's my handle on all social media platforms. OK. All right. OK, so before we get into this, yes, technology is, of course, a double edged sword. Just as fire can cook our food, it can also burn us. Right. Uh, I know there are a lot of people who are afraid of technology, uh, one, because we always fear things that we don't know. Um, and once we learn it and we can become more comfortable with it, those fears can seem to subside. Uh, also, uh, time consumption. Technology is supposed to help us become quicker, faster, getting things done. Uh, but oftentimes, if you're anything like me, especially starting out learning some of these apps, um, I, I tend to spend a lot of time on them, right? Uh, so you have to be kind of careful and cautious of how you're spending time with the technology that's in your life every day. Right. So that's some stuff that we're going to talk about today. Just keep that in mind as we go forward. Um, here we go. So is the use of technology important in time management? 
I'd like to know what you guys think. Um, I think it absolutely is. Uh, but there are things that, you know, that 50 years ago you couldn't do today. Um, but it's supposed to be much more helpful today. Right. Um, anyway, so uh, this is just a pros and cons list of uh, important time management. Is, is the use of technology important in time management? So one, yes, I feel as a pro, uh, it, technology helps you stay goal and task specific. Right, we can hop on the internet and um, and say we want to uh, work on the website for an hour or two, uh, and then next thing you know, you've jumped over to Facebook to try to grab a picture that you had, and then now you're in your timeline, uh, and then you're just lost in the in the infinite world of uh, information and and other people's business, right? So I think that technology helps us to, to stay goal and task specific, which helps us get us to our goals and dreams and things like that. Right. Um, and technology also does not forget. Right. Um, there are things that that we have a lot going on in our brains every day trying to be productive uh, and things like that. Um, technology won't forget if you program it to remember or remind you to do something, it's not going to forget. Um, if you tell uh, your cousin to remind you uh, to, to wake up at a certain time or, or something like that, there is a good possibility that that, that human element will fail you. And, um, and so technology doesn't forget and it won't fail you in that, in that regard. And then lastly, uh, accountability for your number one asset, time. If you don't know where your time is going every single day, um, I'll tell you this, you will absolutely be surprised of how much time you spend on certain tasks every day. Um, and even not just tasks, right? Just um, the, the scroll through uh, social media, looking at Instagram and all those kinds of things. Uh, if you're an online shopper, how much time do you spend browsing and shopping and things like that? Uh, so we're going to talk about some tools today to kind of make you, that can help you realize where your time is actually going um and and and, be, and become more accountable for that time now some cons with technology uh people do feel it is distracting it can be distracting uh just like we talked about with social media and all these other distractions on the internet um yes distracting it can absolutely be but uh, again if you see what right next to it goal and task specific if you're staying goal and task specific specific about things that you are trying to accomplish that day uh and you utilize the, the right technology tools it can absolutely um, uh, get rid of that distraction. Uh, expensive, uh, oftentimes technology, especially new technology can be absolutely expensive. Uh, but <clears throat> again, the classes that I teach are very, very uh, affordable and most of the time free. That's my favorite four letter word, like I said. Um, and then time consuming. Setting up these things can take a little bit of time, yes. But the point of setting them up is so that you can free up time later, right? So yes, sometimes it can be time consuming, but that's why you can watch some of these videos that I do here. Uh, and then also, if you need to get a little bit more hands on, I am also available for one-on-one -on -one sessions and things like that. So, uh, but yes, these are the pros and cons. Let me get, let, let me know what, if there are any other pros and cons that you guys think um, uh, are uh, in the use of technology and its importance to time management. All right. so. Let's get into this. The big concept, big concept is you cannot run at full throttle when applying your mindset to all of the different things running through your head. Focusing is the key to manifesting your desires, right? So this is what we're going to talk about. I'm trying to make sure I know we have a million, million things going on in our head. Oh, I got to remember to do this. Remember to do that. Got to do this. Got to do that. Right. But in the midst of all of those errands, are you getting any real productivity done with your time? Right. So that's what we're going to talk about. With no further ado, let's jump right in. So my very first thing we're going to talk about is just staying organized with calendars, scheduling, uh, and and, and uh, apps like that. So the very first one is Google Calendar. Uh, if you see these links on the screen, uh, this is uh, what these are links that I've created to meet with people and have them schedule their own consultations. 
uh, and or uh, just meetings if they want to talk about anything. That's what the coffee with Rodney's are. Um, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open up a uh, Google Calendar so we can <clears throat> take a look. I want to just show you guys some basics. Again, like I said, we don't have a lot of time uh, for this uh, to be done today. However, um, we are definitely going to go through some of the basics here. So get this pulled up. So in Google Calendars, all you need is a Gmail account to, to, to start with Google Calendars, okay? Um, and what I'm gonna show you today is just how to create an event, how to uh, create a task, uh, and then how to share your calendar, okay? So this is important, uh, especially if you're working with teams. Uh, so what I wanna do first is you can see, this is the business technology class that I've already got scheduled. Um, and up here, you can see where it says month right here, right next to the gear, which is the settings menu. Uh, you can click the view. Right now, I'm in month view. You can also view weekly, daily. So you have different views. This is the weekly view if you wanted to look at that. Uh, this is just my calendar for the business tech tools class. Uh, it's usually a lot more chaos on here. Uh, but okay, so that's it. Uh, the, these are the different looks. Um, and then to create an event, you see this little plus sign over here it says create. All you do is click on that, add a name. Let's say business tech tools uh, example meeting. Great. All right, so now you got these two tasks, these two buttons here. Uh, and this is just in the basic free Gmail version. Okay, so this is a, you can add an event, you can add a task, and if I have reminders clicked here, you can also add reminders, right? So once you're creating this event, you can add guests, add a location or conferencing, add a description. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on more options so we can get into the, the, the more in-depth side of this thing here. Okay. Now, you can see you have the name here. You can pick your date, time. Let's just say tomorrow, 1.30 to 2.30 is fine. You can pick if it does repeat. So if you do like a meeting that's every single Friday or maybe the first Sunday of the month or the first Saturday of the month, you can schedule it any of those ways. You can even customize it if you already have like your yearly calendar already planned out and scheduled. Uh, you can customize uh, how often the event actually repeats itself. Uh, so if you're trying to do, um, I don't know, um, open house every week or every month, uh, you can schedule it on here uh, with no issues at all, right? So then also in this time where we are dealing with um, a lot of having to work from home and work, work remotely and meet clients remotely, uh, all you have to do is you can add a location, obviously, if you wanted to meet them in person. But with what we're doing right now, what we're dealing with, in Google Calendar, you can click on Add Conferencing. Hangouts pops right up. Hangouts is absolutely free for uh, uh, anyone with a Gmail account. You can click on that. It automatically has the link there. So when you send this, which you go over here and add guests, and you send this to anybody, they can go in, click on the link, go directly to the video call. They don't have to use the video if they don't want to, but they can absolutely go straight to that call uh, directly from their Google Calendar uh, or from the email that is sent from Google Calendars inviting them to this event. I think that is really, really cool. Something that you guys should absolutely be using right now. Uh, so if you set an appointment with a seller, right, you're doing a listing appointment, or uh, you have a client that uh, wants to meet 
uh, about a large purchase or something along those lines, you can go in, put this calendar, put the meeting date in there, maybe just a listing presentation for whatever the family is, uh, the tapes or whatever. Uh, put the date, the time, add the location of the address, or just put in the Hangouts uh, conferencing link. All they have to do is come in and click on it and, they, and they're ready to rock and roll. Uh, you can also obviously uh, change the color to color scheme these events uh, so it's easier when you're looking at your uh, calendar from a big view that you'll be able to see the color codes and know exactly what meetings that you are trying to catch. OK. Um, all right. So another cool thing about Google Calendar and we're going to have to move on. Uh, you can attach things here so you can attach uh, documents, um, uh, whatever. Uh, you can attach links which means you can put videos in here. You can a welcome video. Thank you for uh, choosing to meet with me. Here are some things that you need to know before we meet. Right. Uh, I think that is really, really uh, uh, powerful if you use it, uh, because not only are they getting the confirmation that you told them that you're going to give them a confirmation over the phone. You also did a video. So now that they have a video introduction of you, before you even have to go out to like a listening appointment or meet them in person, or just even before they get on the hangouts, they can kind of get used. Oh, there he is on the screen or there she is on the screen. Um, when I click on this hangout, then it's probably what it's going to look like. And they already are comfortable with using a little bit of technology with you guys. So uh, I think that that's really, really helpful. Um, I, and you can absolutely uh, add anything you want. Uh, in here so you can do that and then to add a guest all you do is click on here type in the email uh, and then and, and then add them it's, it's really that simple uh, if you guys have any questions drop them in the comment section here um, and we're gonna move right along <clears throat> all right so there's one last thing I do want to show you guys before um, we get off of the Google Calendar I shortened all of my links. Obviously, you can see the bit.ly links here, uh, but that's just to make it easier to read and easier to understand. Um, and so with a Google Suite or a G Suite account, you can absolutely set up appointment slots in your calendar where all you have to do is share the link, share the link with your clients or potential clients and let them go in the calendar and pick the date, time, um, uh, the date and time of when you want to or when they want to meet with you or when's available uh, when the availability is for you. So that's what these are. If you guys are on your own computer or on your phone, you can absolutely type them in and just kind of see what they look like in person. Uh, I'm going to show it to you really quick right now. Um, I'll get back to that. There we go. Okay. All right. So if I send somebody the link, this is where they could go in and set up the coffee chats. Uh, I also have uh, the op The other link is just meet with Rodney, uh, which is just a link that uh, gives it's basically like a consultation link, about 45 minute meeting. Uh, the coffee chats are about 25, 30 minutes um, and they could come in, click on one, put in their uh, information, uh, where we're meeting at, what we're meeting about and then save. And then it will take this slot off of the screen. So let's say me about um, something dealing with technology. All right. Uh, let's say Starbucks or something. Save it. Your appointment has been saved. I can go look at it in my calendar and you see how it comes off of my calendar automatically. The space is now empty. So helpful because it helps you block time without actually having to go in, set it up, send them the confirmation, all of those things. You can go in, just automatically set these up and have them click on it, schedule it. They get an email, you get an email. 
the, the the deal is booked, right? So I think that's really, really helpful. Only can be used in G Suite though. So if you're not using G Suite, uh, I haven't done a video on G Suite yet, uh, but I will do one in the future uh, once I feel that the demand is up um, and we will definitely go into that. So any questions about that, just let me know, drop them in the comment section. Thank you very much. Now, let's back to the presentation at hand. So that's Google Calendar. Uh, there's one more scheduler that I want to talk about before we move on um, from just scheduling and time blocking, and that's Square. Uh, I actually got this one um, from uh, a buddy of mine, one of my VPs. Uh, I think she's on right now, actually. Camille uses this for her. Um, she's also a, a hairstylist, hair beautician. Uh, I don't know what the official title is, but this is something that I thought was just for like merchants. And after looking at it again, it absolutely is not. You can use this for any platform, any business there is. Uh, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this. I literally just set this thing up yesterday. So uh, if you guys want, you can follow it right here on this little link, my little bit.ly link. You don't have to do the HTTPS. You can start with bit.ly uh, slash book take now and go right to this page. But I'm actually about to pull it up. So uh, just bear with me uh, while I pull it up and show you what this thing looks like. This one won't be a, a how to. This one is just going to be a tour of what I set up and, and how it looks and how it can uh, benefit you guys. <clears throat> oh yeah, Evernote is great, Cheryl, absolutely. Okay, uh, let's see, so we are going, here we go. So I have a special link, that link that I just had on my screen, uh, if you put it in your phone or you typed it in your browser or you clicked on it, uh, this is the page it'll bring you to. I put my logo up here, a company name, and book an appointment. You can have your operating hours here, uh, address of the business location here, obviously your Facebook and Instagram uh, and Twitter. Uh, I don't use my Twitter account, so it's not on here. Uh, but this is what that page looks like. It's just the very, very beginning. It shows my services here at the bottom, um, group classes, buyer consultations, keynote speaking, home valuation consultations, one-on-one -on -one tech coaching, uh, all of my uh, services right here, uh, still building out the services. Like I said, I just did this yesterday. Um, I'm gonna go to a full screen here because it looks like it may be a little difficult for everyone else to see. Okay, so I'm click on book an appointment. There we go. All right, so, and this is what it looks like, right? So it almost looks like it's on a web page, which is awesome. Um, you have like my group classes here. You can put price varies, uh, virus consultations, about 45 minutes, they're, and they are free. Uh, home consultation valuations are, uh, I can choose what I wanna do, right? If you want uh, just a full report without meeting with me, uh, maybe a small fee for that. Um, and then anything else for just a standard report that doesn't cost anything. Uh, and then keynote speaking, I have all these variations where it can be uh, just a 15 minute talk, a 30 minute address, or a uh, one hour custom keynote speech for a company, organization, or what have you. Uh, and then also have one-on-one -on -one tech coaching. So you come in, you can kind of pick with how many hours you need or, or what you want to do, and you can book it right from here. Um, when you hit book now, it gives you the calendar. You can pick your date, Let's say Monday. Look at the time slots here. This is awesome, so awesome. It's all based off of the operating hours that you have, right? So let's say one o'clock on Monday. You can put your information in here. Uh, and I, I suggest you, if you guys haven't had this or ever tried this, at least put in a booking. I'm not gonna charge you anything for it, I promise. Uh, but um, um, definitely try it so you can kind of see because it has this automated, um, it's an automated text uh, application. So as soon as somebody books an appointment, it handles the rest of it for you. It basically will tell you, uh, here's the time and date for your appointment. You can reply to this chat if you have any questions about your uh, 
meeting. And I absolutely did that yesterday just to see how intuitive it was. I said, thank you. After they sent that to me, it immediately sent me your welcome. Uh, and then after that, I was like, hmm, uh, what if I need to change my appointment? Uh, and then it gave me a link to if I want to change my appointment, here's where you would go. And I didn't do any of that. That is all part of the technology that's already set up within Square. So uh, I, I love it for that reason, because it gives you a, a, a sense of a little bit of automation. And I love, love, love automation. Uh, so I could go in and put all this stuff in and then I'll hit a book appointment. You'll see upon booking Square will automatically create an account for you uh, with Square appointments and you can sign back in uh, to uh, R RTJ Solutions uh, using your mobile number at any time. By creating this appointment, you agree to receive automated text messages from Square. So I got that. I sent it and it was it was it was just amazing uh, that how intuitive the um the it's kind of like having an appointment assistant uh that's automated which is awesome yep and got camille agreeing with me thank you very much can it link to different calendars uh yes miss williams it can link to different calendars uh, i think you're talking about the google calendars um you can link other calendars to google for sure if that's what you're asking um, and you can also share your Google calendars with multiple people. That's something I wanted to show, but we're just running uh, a little over time here because there's so much content to go over. Uh, good question, though. It, it can link to different calendars. Absolutely. OK, so if, there, if you guys have any questions about Square, this is absolutely something that is really one of my favorite uh, new discoveries. Um, and I think you guys should absolutely take a look at it. It is absolutely free. You don't have to pay for this thing at all. So uh, definitely take a look at it. You know, that's my favorite four letter word, free. Okay, so now that's Square. You can take a look at the bit.ly slash book take now, uh, bit.ly slash book take now, and you can look at that example, kind of see what I'm talking about there. now. Getting out of the booking part of this, we are now out of scheduling, but we need to be focused on focusing, right? So I think that something that um, happens far too often is that you can get started on a project, especially if you're creating something. I know I get to working on Canva uh, flyers and things like that. And next thing I know, I look up an hour, hour and a half has passed me by. Um, and, uh, and, and hopefully I've made some leeway and some progress, right? Um, but this app here is called Forest. I have not used this app, but it has a, a ton of reviews online. Uh, and the free version is, is pretty cool because it kind of lets you know, it kind of shows you how it works and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but Forest is an app that helps you stay focused on important things, right? Whenever you want to stay focused, you open the app, you basically plant a seed in the ground, put how much time you need for this task to be accomplished, right? And then um, and then you'll see your tree start to grow. If you leave the app or, uh, or leave it unattended uh, or don't respond that you've completed your stuff, your tree will die, right? So, but if you do complete it, you start to grow, you start to grow these little forests and things like that. I think this just helps for those people who are more visual and uh, instead of watching a timer, say I'm going to do an hour of this kind of work, instead of watching a timer, they can have that tree growing uh, and it shows progress and, and that you're actually getting something done. So I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, so let's grow some trees and plant some seeds uh, so we can get you guys back focused on uh, getting some of these, these tasks that you have on your plate done. Um, really, really simple though. You just download the app uh, on the free version. You can only do five trees. So you'd want to, you know, um, if you really like the app and you use it all the time, I would uh, consider looking into the uh, paid version if you uh, find it to be helpful. OK. All right. Now, this one here, this one is really, <laughs> I think, going to be uh, controversial for some people. Some people don't like giving technology too much of their information. Um, I'm going I'm to just say this. Um, if you are worried about other people finding information um, about you or that, that people are tracking you or anything like that, you can get over that. They've been watching and tracking all of this stuff since the beginning of the Internet. So um, if you think you're hiding anything online uh, or, or by not 
giving access to certain apps that um, that you're more protected. Uh, yeah, no, get that out of your head. That's not the way that works. Um, but anyway, Rescue Time uh, is a app, really not an app. It's a system that will help track time on sites that you're on, right? So if you're supposed to be on uh, MLS or you're supposed to be working on a spreadsheet in Microsoft um, Excel or in Google Sheets or, some, uh, or something along those lines, but you're finding that, uh, but you're over here on Facebook the whole time you're supposed to be doing that. Oh, excuse me. Rescue time will absolutely uh, let you know how much time you spent in those specific applications. So if you've got Facebook open for four hours in a day, uh, it's going to tell you. Uh, I think that is so awesome. Uh, it also helps you set goals and see what progress uh, uh, you've made as far as time uh, consumption um, with the e weekly email report. So every week they're going to say, okay, these were your goals. This is what you were trying to accomplish. This is how much time you want to spend on these apps and whether or not you accomplish those goals. Uh, and I think the biggest part and is why it's the most intrusive, I feel uh, not a bad intrusive. It's just that they have access to everything. Um, you can work across your platforms, right? So if you set this up on your computer, yeah, it's taking time to watch your computer and say, okay, you're spending time here or spending time there on whatever sites. Um, but um, if you, hold on, let me see this. Yeah, so it'll tell you uh, what you're working on on just the desktop, right? But then also you can look on your mobile phone and now you're scrolling on Instagram while you're supposed to be on the computer doing your work, right? Or uh, you go into a different web browser or something like that. So this app actually will monitor not only your desktop, but also your mobile phone and your browser history. So it's basically gonna tell you all the time that you spend across your devices all together, right? It does all this, these features that you see here on the screen, time tracking, goals and alerts, uh, distraction blocking, uh, which means it won't allow you access to certain sites while you're supposed to be working. Uh, work hours is what that is as well. And then offline time. So when you are supposed to be uh, spending time with family, getting some yard work done or uh, reading or some self-development stuff, uh, what you would do is you would set your own offline time and then your devices won't allow you to access uh, um, those sites and things like that because you're supposed to be on off, off offline time. So this one is a little bit intrusive, I think, because you give it a lot of permissions. Uh, but I think that if you really are struggling with time management and knowing where your time's going every day, it's definitely worth trying the light version. Uh, the light version has everything we just talked about, uh, the automatic time tracking on sites, uh, and all apps also, and then uh, set goals in your weekly report and work across your platforms like your desktop and your cell phone and, and the browser as well. So that's the light version of that. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I, I definitely am going to try it out just so I can let you guys know how it works so I can do a more in-depth video on just rescue time alone. All right. Any questions about any of these stuff? Let any of these things let me know. Ah, okay, Camille, you must like that one. I know it's crazy though, but it will absolutely tell you how much time you spend on a certain app. Um, it'll help you track your goals and where you're supposed to be on websites. Uh, and I think this is really, really huge uh, to try to keep people focusing on, on and task oriented. Okay. So try it out, you guys. Let me know what you think about it. If you're gonna try it, I see Penny says she's gonna try it out. That's great. Let me know what you think, uh, and just try the light version. I don't ever ask anybody to pay for anything without trying it for a little while first to make sure that it is something that you will implement in your business, right? So uh, definitely try the light version first, and if uh, if you love it and you want more, absolutely consider going to one of the premium or other packages. All right. So now, with that being said, once we get you all organized and things, you'll be able to start going to more classes, maybe taking more meetings and things like that. Uh, and 
note taking is something that is is crucial for uh, especially entrepreneurs um, who are uh, looking to expand, looking to learn some more, uh, taking meetings. Uh, you want to remember those things that are important in meetings that you go to. Uh, so these two apps I found to be the most useful. Um, Evernote is 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 really cool. It's a web based software. Uh, does have a free version, um, and then uh, it it. it um, has note organizing so when you have notes that are similar in nature it can have automatically put them together so you're not looking all over the place with those notes and you can share notes easily with other people um evernote is also really cool because if you guys have ever used pinterest uh pinterest is where you can kind of take a picture of something online and put it on your board or whatever uh, Evernote has something similar to that. You take a snap of whatever the information is that you see on a website, whether it's a picture or an article or a column, uh, and then you can put your own notes to it and organize it however you want in Evernote. So I think that's really, really awesome. Um, what Evernote used to be free a long time ago, um, and now they have three different versions of it. And we'll just go over their package real quick so you guys can see it. Um, where is it? Here we go. So Evernote, um, they have three plans here. The basic is uh, just for note taking. Uh, uh, the premium version has everything to organize. And then uh, Evernote business is if you have a team of people and you want to be able to share notes easily with any in the team. Um, but they do have a free version. Again, I will always say if you want to try something, just try it out for free first uh, and then uh consider purchasing it if it benefits you and your business right um, but evernote's really cool uh used to be free back in the day obviously they've come a long way uh so these are some of the features here uh and the basic package is take great notes and capture inspiration you can only do a little bit of that uh which means the taking of the pictures that's in the free version um, be organized and sharing with others uh, are all in the basic package okay um, I, Evernote's cool. My my main one that I use now is OneNote, and let's see if it's gonna screen share for me here. I don't think it did. So let me see. Let me get my screen share up here. There we go. I think that worked. No, it did not. All right, bear with me one moment, you guys. Hold on one second. I lost it. Okay, okay. So here's what I need to do now. I'm going to share my OneNote with you guys. Um, and let's see, I'm going to remove this one. And then. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I think you guys can see my screen now. This here is OneNote. Um, just really quick here. Uh, this is basically it's like a notebook setup i have a million real notebooks that i write in uh all the time and this is just the digital version of that uh, they are all color coded uh, i have them broken down into major topics that i uh, deal with every single day or organizations that i deal with every single day um, and what's so awesome about this is that uh, once you open up a notebook it gives you all of these sections that you can create for that notebook and then you can go in and have individual notes uh, on each single 
topic, right? So uh, for instance, if we go to school here, um, on the school, I can add a new page on the time management uh, and say um, tutorial. What's really cool about this is that not only can I import images, take pictures directly from the app, uh, but I can also record while I'm in here. And what that looks like is if I want to record audio while we're talking. So now it's starting to record, right? Um, so teacher saying something about the history of 2020 or something like that. 2020 history, uh, pandemic or whatever, right? I can say all these things. I can write in here. I can take a picture, add some lines, all this stuff, whatever, 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 right? And then once I go up here and then I hit stop, I can hit the playback. And when I hit playback, I can literally rewatch all of the notes that I've taken and while I was taking those notes, how it was coming out. So take a look. Um, so teacher saying, so now it's starting to record, right? Um, so teacher saying something about the history of 2020 or something like that. 2020 history. Uh, you see the arrow? Or whatever, right? I can say all these things. I can write in here. I can take a picture. You see that? The arrow goes to the line that I was on during that time that it was talking. Right? Right. Yeah. So that's awesome. I really, really like that, especially if you use any kind of writing uh, device or anything like that. Uh, you can also insert photos and pictures, files, uh, documents, uh, links, meeting details, symbols, equations. It can do math for you. Uh, so really, really great note taking tool. Uh, one of my favorites is definitely one that I use the most often. Uh, if you guys have any questions about that one, just let me know. Um, and we'll be good to go with that. So um, now we only got about 10, 15, 10 minutes left or so. Um, so I wanna get back into our, um, there we go, okay. All right, so that's OneNote and Evernote. Those are the, the note-taking tools that I suggest and that I've used and I like. Uh, there are a million of them out there, uh, so please feel free to take a look and see what you can find on your own as well. Uh, and then we're gonna move right along so we can get this last one in. So this is the last one here. This is our last point for the day. Uh, this is what's called Dash Lane. There are a bunch of password uh, software uh, companies out there. So uh, this one here uh, will fill in all your passwords, all your payment information, personal details, uh, wherever you need them, anywhere on the web, on any device, right? Um, so you can get right to what you want to do. No roadblocks, no stopping. Uh, they are a password manager, but that is not all that this thing does. Uh, I've installed it on my computer and it has uh, it does automatically fill all my passwords, uh, which is crazy. And the reason this is important, let me do this first. The reason this is important is not only because we forget passwords, get locked out of things and we have to do the forgot password thing all the time. It's not just for that. This is also a security issue. Oftentimes, if you have multiple platforms that you need to log into, there is a good possibility that in an effort to not forget, you will make a password that you've already used before. And, and if you do that several, several times across the internet and the dark web picks it up, there's a good possibility that you can be hacked. And it can, especially if it's a similar password for all of your logins, it could be, um, you can really get hacked pretty quickly. 
Um, so what this is cool, what's cool about this uh, dash lane is that all you have to do is remember one master password. It also has this 24 uh, character uh, pin code that they will send you that you do not want to lose. Um, it is so secure that even the website, if you forget your master password, there's only one password you got to remember. Don't forget it. But if you do, they cannot reset it because if you if they can reset it, that makes it uh, a, a, a loophole for somebody else to come in um, and hack that information. Right. So even if you lose your uh, password with this app here, they will not be able to recover it for you. So make sure that you don't lose it if you use this. Uh, but the the big thing here is when I when I downloaded it, it imported 90 passwords that I had all time history in my uh, Google Chrome browser, which is insane. Like 80, 90. Pa I know I don't know most of those passwords. I know I don't. Um, but it imported all of them. So now when I go to those sites and I can't remember, it's already going to be loaded and preloaded for me. Uh, so that's really, really amazing. And not only that, uh, but what, once you get it logged in on there, it will start to change those passwords for you so that when you do log in with your master key password, they have a stronger password for those other sites. So um, for instance, a really strong password has um, like eight uh, characters, at least uh, a number uh uh, a symbol, two numbers, two symbols, whatever. Um, most of the time we put stuff that we can remember, like two two words, uh, a kid's name and their birthday and an exclamation point, something silly like that. Uh, but a really strong password are a bunch of uppercase, lowercase letters, uh, a, a combination of long numbers, probably around 14 to 16 digits long. It's going to be hard to remember all of those, but you don't have to anymore because you can go to Dashlane, fill it in. It is absolutely free. Uh, all you have to do is download it and then put it in your Chrome browser, download it long, uh, so that you have it go across all of the platforms that you have. What makes it different than Google Passwords? Is it more secure? Ah, very good question. All right, Ms. Williams asks, what makes it different than Google Passwords? Is it more secure? The answer is uh, yes, it is more secure. And the reason is because uh, Dashlane is a uh, server that works also as a VPN. Uh, VPNs uh, are virtual protection, virtual privacy networks or something along those lines. Anyway, it is exactly that. It is its own server. It has its own VPN. So um, yes, Google does has like malware, spyware, stuff like that, that they can watch out for things. Uh, but this site is literally uh, designated just for security. Um, uh, Google Passwords just saves it in your Chrome uh, device. So if you ever logged in from like, let's say Edge, Microsoft Edge or from Safari or from any of those other browsers, uh, those passwords will not be saved. And the only way you'd be able to access them is through Google Passwords. With Dashlane, uh, it doesn't matter what browser or any of that stuff that you're in. Um, it gets you into whatever application that you are trying to log into. Really, really good question. Yes, it is more secure only because it acts as a VPN as well. Um, and Google does a lot to try to protect its consumers. I am a huge, huge Google fan. Uh, in fact, I have a Google class coming up in uh, two weeks. Um, uh, but I think as far as security is concerned and maintaining all your passwords in one place uh, so that it's secure, um, this includes your Google password. If you have a Google uh, if you're logged into your Google Chrome or any of that stuff, that password is included in all of this. Um, so it is definitely more secure because all of those passwords, including a Chrome password, is all secured and can be changed uh, at any given time. Great, great question. Um, so that's it for Dashlane. Uh, if you guys have any questions about it, please drop them in the comments uh, right now. And then just don't be this guy. Information goes in, leaks right out the back. 
Yeah, we've all been there or we know somebody. All right. So here we go. I'm reaching the end of this uh, this little talk here, uh, reviewing some key concepts. Uh, Google Calendar, use this app to set reminders, invite appointments, organize your day. And don't forget that you can also set up those um, uh, virtual meetings directly through Google Calendar. No need to go to Zoom, get a link, send the link, attach the link, all that kind of stuff. You can do it right in the Google Calendar app. Square, awesome, awesome tool. Use this tool to book appointments. You can also sell merchandise. You can even ask for a credit card to be on file for appointments uh, that just to make sure that they don't cancel, right? Uh, and maximize on every appointment. Square is really, really awesome. Uh, forest, plant seeds of focus time while you uh, watch your forest grow. Uh, OneNote and Evernote, keep all your notes in one place without killing any trees. <laughs> the forest app will really appreciate that. Uh, rescue time, get serious about tracking your time and be accountable to you and your goal and your dreams. Uh, and then dash lane, remember, never remember multiple passwords again, just protect yourself online. Um, it can also do that as well. So very, very awesome. This has been a really great class. I appreciate you guys for being uh, in tune and asking the questions. Uh, but this is your time now to ask any questions that you guys may have. Um, first, though, I want to say really quick, uh, this is what I do. I provide these classes for free. It does take a little bit of time and things like that to get them organized. But if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, or a complete setup of any of the tools presented, please uh, go to my new <laughs> uh, bit.ly, bit.ly slash book take now. It is case sensitive, so make sure that the capital B, capital T, capital N, um, and uh, go to book take now and uh, schedule a time. I'll be more than happy to sit with you and at least give you a consultation about what we can do for you. Uh, we'll schedule that consultation, discuss your goals and your system integration, the uh, systems that you want to get integrated. Uh, and then we will create a custom and affordable package so that you can produce like a boss. These classes, again, are free. Uh, but if you guys want a little more uh, in-depth detail, I'd be more than happy to provide that for you uh, or your team or your company or your organization. Uh, and finally, that's it for me. You can find me at any of these platforms. This is my uh, at Real Estate Tate on all social media. Uh, my website is RodneyTateJr.com. And you can re reach me on all my uh, value links at Linktree slash Real Estate Tate. Any questions? I'm going to hang around for another about five minutes or so. See if you guys have any questions or anything like that. Uh, again, I appreciate it. And uh Look forward to seeing you guys next week. Oh, by the way, next week's class. Next week's class will be, uh, let's see, what are we doing next week? Oh, remote communication. Uh, I know, we're like I said earlier, we're living in a weird time where we have to kind of meet remotely uh, and we have to work on these platforms. Um, so I'm going to talk about some apps that we can use like Zoom, FaceTime, Facebook video, uh, Duo, Hangouts, all of those little apps. What's the difference? What works best? who's struggling right now because of server issues, because there's such a high demand of these kind of meetings. Uh, so that's what we're gonna meet about next Friday, one o'clock, same place, subscribe right now to make sure that you get that reminder um, uh, so you can not miss any of this information, these free nuggets that I'm gonna give you guys here. Um, but that's it, so uh, remote communication, a flyer will be out soon. Uh, remote communication next week. Next Friday, one o'clock, same place, same time. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, drop them, drop them for me. And uh, I really do appreciate you guys. Appreciate that, Camille. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for trying it out, Penny. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. I really do appreciate it. Anything I can do for you guys, you just let me know. I'll be more than happy. Oh yeah, those Evernote notes aren't going anywhere. That's the thing about digital footprint. Um, like Unlike paper, it won't dissolve or anything like that, so. <laughs> Oh, you're absolutely welcome, Penny. It's my pleasure. 
Anything else you guys need from me, just let me know. Wish I could play some music and not get in trouble on this thing. <laughs> All right, it's two o'clock, guys. I see there are no questions, so we're gonna go ahead and get out of here on time. Uh, if you guys have any questions for me, please feel free to reach me at um, um, on uh, any of my Facebook platforms, uh, Instagram, YouTube, doesn't matter. Just shoot them to me. Uh, or you can email me at rtate.assured at gmail.com. Uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you guys have. Thanks again. And in this broadcast now, you guys be safe, stay clean, wash your hands. Talk to you guys later. See you next week.